Hans and his wife, Sarah, have become friends. You know, we do life together. This is not just a traveling minister. He's actually a painter by trade. He paints houses. That's his business. And he's looking for kind of just more opportunities. We're trusting God with him to see God use him more out in ministry because he is a blessing. And honestly, every time I've ever been with him, you know, we were talking about this. It's like in ministry, you meet some weird people. There's some weird ministers out there. I just want to tell you. And so I kind of, my grid is when I'm with them, I kind of remove the mystique and their, what they're doing and their gifting and their role. And I'm like, do I just, do I like this person? Like, do I actually connect? Is this person, can you have a conversation? You know what I mean? But Hans is a friend and we talk and we talk regularly. You see him comment probably weekly on our messages. You're part of this church long distance wise and we're value. We're secretly praying for he and his wife to move here. So you can agree with us in that, but you know, more importantly, we want them to be led by the spirit where they need to go. Their, their daughter is a swimmer for Purdue and she just got a job offer and probably moving to the Southeast Carolina area, huh? Raleigh, Raleigh near you your home, <laughs> and then your son you just dropped off in Phoenix at college, Grand Canyon, Grand Canyon University. Yeah. So they have two children, awesome family. We love them. Show him some love as he comes up here. Thank you, man. Check, check. Hello, hello. All right. Thanks, man. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Awesome, awesome. Man, what a privilege it is to be here with you guys. Um, just want to say thank you uh, for, for having me. Thank you to Clint and Sarah and so many of you. Um, we consider you guys just dear friends um, and just love. I mean, I could be anywhere in the world right now, and I'm here, one of my favorite places in the whole wide world. Amen. To be at Forward Church in Sharpsburg, Georgia. Woo bringing the word of God, preaching the gospel. Man, the gospel, I cannot get over the gospel. Amen. I'm not trying to, but I can't. Man, when you know it's good news, you just wake up like, hey, I've got a sense of purpose. God loves me. If I don't do anything for him all day or if I do everything for him, he loves me. I'm not a servant. Servants are busy occupying, doing things. Now we serve, of course, but like, like the, the scripture said earlier, but we're friends, we're sons. Family members relate, come on. Amen. Servants are occupied doing. We're human beings, not human doings. Amen? Amen? So I'm thrilled to be preaching the gospel anywhere at any time. And sometimes I get to use words to do it, okay? Um, I also want to give a shout out uh, because she's here. Uh, Miss Gloria Erickson, where are you? I don't Aww. see. Right back there. Um, she's helped me tremendously with, yeah. You, Give her some love, as you all say here, okay? Um, but she's helped me tremendously with getting the books out and resources out uh, for the gospel and the kingdom of God. And, and there's many more. There's other things. Uh, like Clint said, I paint houses to support my ministry habit, my family. Um, you know, we're all over the place this weekend. I'm sure they're watching. So uh, love my wife, love my kids. Just give me a minute. All right, we're good. Okay, um, but I just I just love them because of what God's done in our in our family. Yeah. It's important. Didn't expect that. All right, the anointing leaks out your eyes sometimes, and that's okay. <laughs> right? Um, but but no, it, it means something because it's changed our the gospel's changed our generation. It's changed our, our going forward. God sees bigger than we see. He sees inside and outside of time. And there's hope for us today, okay? Everybody turn to your neighbor as we get going. Turn to your neighbor and say, grow. Turn to your other neighbor and say, up. Now say your name. Okay? No, not, not your spouse's name, your name, all right? Okay, speaking the truth in love is how we grow up, right? And you guys have such a wonderful environment here, a mature environment where the truth is spoken and will challenge you and love is demonstrated and will challenge you and it keeps you in a pattern of growth. It keeps you in a pattern of maturity, okay? And this is important. I have such a passion to redeem the prophetic with a finished work message 
because it doesn't have to be flaky and goofy and mystical and bizarre. It can be reliable and building and strong because healthy people, built up people build the church. Hello? Amen. Right? We need integrity. We need consistent, uh, consistency. We need supernatural to be demonstrated in this time, in this hour. And there is hope, guys. Too often we look around and see everything going on in this sense realm and, and it, it hits our mind and we're like, oh man, I, I just don't know anymore, right? And then you start entertaining things that aren't true, right? And we, and we battle with that in, in our heart. Am I speaking to anyone today, right? Okay, and then you get back to focusing on the gospel and you realize I've got a hope that is not put inside time. It is outside of time. It's eternal. It's always there because his name is Jesus. Amen. All right. So what is the gospel? You know, Clint's been preaching on this for a couple weeks. So this is going to basically be week three in this series. Um, that's just how it's kind of dovetailed and what God put on my heart. So I just want to give you uh, a summary kind of of what I've seen. So week one, uh, you know, the gospel is heard. Experiencing God is how your heart heard the gospel. Now, you may have heard it through seed. You may have heard it through fruit or you may have heard it through gifts. Okay, so you had an experience with the gospel and you came into the goodness of God in some way, shape or form in, in one of those areas, right? Now, the good news is really about hearing how, how good God is and where that was sourced from. How did that happen? Where did that come from? And you say, well, I don't know if I heard God or, and it's like, listen, some of you guys came in here on, on supernatural deliverance. Some of you guys came in here on your, you know, a body part was healed. Some of you guys came in because your grandma prayed for you for years and brought you to church. There's all kinds of ways we come into hearing the gospel. All right. Week two. Uh, last week, I, this is again, this is just my perspective. I'm online a lot. Um, we do church Friday nights, so I get online as often as I can or rewatch re the message within a few days uh, just because I love finished work ministry. <laughs> it's beautiful. Uh, week two, Jesus took all judgment. Everybody say all judgment, all judgment, including the punishment for sin. Jesus is the payment for wrath in his atonement. Because of Jesus, God is not holding our sin against us. Amen. Sin is no longer the issue with God. Self-righteousness is. Oh. Ooh. Got quiet in this Presbyterian church. I'm a Karis grad, by the way. Love Andrew Womack. Shout out to Andrew Womack, Jim Richards, Dave Duell, my guys. Um, now, here's the inside joke, and I want to do this in person. So, should we continue sinning? God forbid. Right? Okay. Romans 6. Right? But if you're preaching grace right, finished work message, people should have that question. It's okay. I mean, honestly, if people don't ask us that question, are we, are we out there enough preaching the message? Anyways, that's week two. And I want to say this as we get going before we really dive in. You know, hearts skeptical of the goodness of God will always bring this up. Grace is greasy and a license to sin. You ever heard that before? People say that. Next thing, they'll bring up the book of Job. And then after that, they'll ask about Ananias, uh, Ananias and Sapphira. Or King Herod's death in Acts 12, right? Those are legitimate questions. I've got no problem with it. But we need to spend more time focused on what Jesus has done and his life, death, burial, and resurrection than, than these unique things. And they're real and there's answers for those. I'm, I'm not saying there's not. But those are typically the counters. I mean, how many times have we heard those coming up out of people's hearts? Amen? I just, I just want to say that. So to, the title of today's message is called Reconciliation, Removing Condemnation Through Faith Righteousness. And we're going to get through this so we can minister at the end. I, I want to minister uh, just practicing the Holy Ghost. All I'm doing is practicing, you know. It, it, what, what else is fun is that we've got another haunts in the room, okay. <laughs> so we got two haunts in the room. That's kind of fun, okay. And he's a lawyer, which, which is awesome. Lawyers and doctors get paid handsomely to practice, right? So as a son of God, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to embarrass him. It's just praise God, right? That sounded like offering time. Yeah, should, should we, we're going to take up a special offer. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. 
That's called manipulation. We don't do that here Amen. or ever, right? And my heart is to love. I hope, you, I hope you're sensing that. I hope you get that. So if I say something tough, talk it out with your pastors. No, <laughs> just kidding. Um, but, but my point is that as, as his children, we have the privilege to practice the kingdom of God and people have eternity to gain. And what do we have to lose? Yeah, good point. Nothing. You've been crucified with Christ. Yourself is done. Represent Jesus. Practice. I'm human. I'm going to miss it. But man, my family and I, we have God's favor on our life. And we don't just kind of like leave it out there. We like lean into that. And sometimes in this grace message, people see that on your life. I believe this is a word for, for everybody. People see that on your life and they get jealous of what you have. It's called persecution. And they're actually pursuing you for what God has placed in Jesus in you that they can't get by earning. So when you're persecuted for righteousness sake, you should lean into that and be like, oh, yeah, they want something that I've got. Not like you can't have it, eh, you know, but to really say, you know what? They don't even know it, but their heart is crying out because they're trying and trying and they're burnt out on religion and they're hurt and they're in pain. And then they comes out of their mouth and Bleh, right. But don't respond in your flesh. Stay the course. Stay consistent. Keep loving them. Right. I love seeing this thing with sonship and grace identity with the supernatural and grace gifts because we can have both working together instead of the extremes of other and people go off on this and people go off on this. Right. Are you getting anything out of this? How are we doing? OK, now I'm going to start preaching. I'm amped up. Everybody put your seatbelts on. Here we go. Romans 1, 16, 17. This is kind of the anchor verse. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. Everybody say believes. believes. For, the Jew, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Verse 17. For in it, the gospel, right? The righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, all these synonymous terms would be the gospel, the finished work, faith, righteousness, grace, death, burial, and resurrection. When you hear those terms, you should get excited, right? They're not exactly identical. There's nuances, but I'm just saying, if you hear that, I think you're in a good place, all right? One of the keys with faith, righteousness is wherever you see faith, put righteousness behind it. Wherever you see righteousness, put faith in front of it. Now, there's a couple places in the word where it's going to talk about self-righteousness, but you've got the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. He'll speak that to you. You'll discern that. That's just a little key to, to I hate even saying that word key, because then it sounds like, woo, here's the magical answer that'll solve all your, no. Just in the word, if you see that, if you see faith, put righteousness behind it. It'll help discern some things. Or if you see righteousness, put faith in front of it. That helped us tremendously in our growth for Sarah and I. Um, good news comes from a good God. Everybody say good God. Good God. Good God. All right. It's so good, we almost have a hard time believing it because we're so conditioned to the world's standards that are so far below. And good news has, has a source, has a good God. Now, as a contractor, good news is when work is done and the check is cleared. <laughs> Any, any contractors in here? Can I get an amen? All right. It's not good news when the check is cleared and you have to go back and finish something, right? Okay. Or the work has been done, but payment is not complete. Anybody ever finished work and sitting on a check? It's in the mail. It's somewhere, right? Guess what? In the gospel, the work is done. Payment has been made. Do you see the, you see the picture there? All right. The difference between mercy and grace, real quick. Mercy doesn't give what you would deserve by your actions or like almost like abstinence. It protects you from death, right? It's, it's or, or the, the protects you from the consequences of death. And it's like the cross versus grace gives you an ability to do something you can't do in your own strength. And this is producing life in us, Right. When I say you, I mean us. I'm, I'm preaching to myself too, okay? And, and it's like the empty tomb, that we come out of the tomb. You guys hear what I'm saying? Okay, because think about it. If you, anybody ever been in a situation where you were, you were 
You did something foolish, okay? And you were dead to rights. But then sh somebody showed you mercy and you didn't get what you would have deserved by the punishment for that. Anybody ever experienced that? Right? When you recognize that, you're a prime candidate for grace. But if you, if you just kind of push that off or whatever, and, and I ask you this, so in that situation, did that drive you into more and saying like, man, how, how can I get away with more? Man, I sinned this bad, maybe I, because I got mercy, maybe now I can sin even further. No, there's this agent called grace that moved on your heart and the love of God hits your heart and you recognized it and you said, I don't want to do that. I don't want to push that. You know, and I, and I want to change my thinking to the way God thinks about me. I want to live on a different plane. I want to live better than I was what I was experiencing. And this, this grace, this ability of God comes in and gives you an ability to do something you couldn't previously do. And I'm not trying to say, well, you got to recognize your sin. and all. Like, I'm not preaching sin. I'm just saying, in that moment, if you recognize that, grace is on the way. And it works. Grace constrains you. Love constrains you better than you can, you know, by trying. I live righteous on accident better, or I mean, holier on accident than I ever could because of faith righteousness. I am a goofball. <laughs> if you haven't picked that up already. Any discerning of spirits in here? No, just kidding. Okay, so we have this thing, gospel, good news, right? And typically we frame it in our minds, the gospel of salvation, the gospel of, you know, eternity of like heaven and hell, right? But there's also thing, this thing called the gospel of the kingdom. And it's experiencing eternal things right here, right now, today. Amen? Amen. So there's the good news of salvation. I'm not, I'm not denying that. I'm not minimizing that. But we're going to expand that a little bit. But there's the gospel of the kingdom. There's the good news of the kingdom. Everybody say kingdom. Okay, Matthew 4, 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. So we see Jesus. The word Galilee means to, uh, to roll or encircle. It speaks of completing the work or making whole. It's a finished work. And in a weird sort of way, it was almost like Jesus was prophesying, I'm going to finish the work. I'm just going to teach in a circle. It's going to be complete, and I'm preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Isn't that good? Amen. I think it's good. I get excited. Luke 6, uh, 6, 47 and 48, it says, Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show them whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently. That's a goofy word against the house and could not shake it for it was founded on the rock. See, the idea when we hear the gospel isn't to say, oh, I know that. Or, I heard that. But the idea is that I step into a place and say, man, I, what will my life look like if I put this into practice? That's how Jesus preached. That's how we should hear the gospel. Man, I want to put this into my life. I want to practice. I want to experience what that's like. I don't want to know just the legality, which is true, but I, I, want, I want to really step into that in my life and experience these promises. We want to hear the word with intention and do something with it because it lays a, a solid foundation in our life. So now that I've heard the gospel, my sin has been paid for. Jesus took all judgment upon the cross. God's wrath against sin is satisfied. What do I do to deal with condemnation in my heart? Have you guys ever had this question? I'm just trying to give like the progression. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, I think this is maybe one of the next ones. I'm not saying there's an exact order. I'm just saying you kind of work this out in your, in your mind, in your heart. And so how do I deal with this sense of condemnation? Well, let's just look at this. Condemnation is a word that means unfit for use. It's like a building being deemed unsafe not functional or uninhabitable. When a building is fixed, it starts from the inside out, from the foundation upward until it is deemed safe, functional, and habitable, a place of dwelling or abiding. In 1 John 3, 18 through 24, it says, My little children, let us not love in word or tongue, but in deed and truth. And by this, 
we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart. Everybody say, God, God is, greater is greater than my heart, than my heart. And, knows and knows all things. How much does he know? All things. All things. Okay. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, oh, here it is, we have confidence toward God. Some people call it Godfidence, okay? If you've ever heard that before. So if our heart doesn't condemn us, if, if our heart, if we can get our heart to a place where we no, no longer see ourselves unfit for use or unfunctional, right? It says we have confidence towards God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment that we should believe. Everybody say believe, believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us the commandment. Now, he who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in him. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. And we all know Romans 8, 1, therefore, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. But this gives us a little picture behind that, right? Um, that confidence from God comes from removing condemnation. Well, how do we do that? that confidence comes with God from removing condemnation. Now, on God's side, has he removed condemnation in the finished work? Yes. Yes. Okay. I, I, I want to make that abundantly clear. This isn't something you're doing to try to clean yourself, okay, or make yourself, a, you know, God hasn't had one person qualified working for him yet. <laughs> Hello, you can look at me, okay, all right, he qualifies the called, he doesn't call the qualified, right. right, you guys have heard this before, I know, but, um, so faith righteousness is the only cure for condemnation, it's not more cowbell, okay, faith righteousness is, <laughs> someone got it, all right. Hans, yep, my man. All right. Faith righteousness is the only cure for condemnation and leads to confidence towards God in the heart. So what is righteousness? Righteousness is God's divine approval making you as you ought to be. So, and, and here's how, here's like the tipping point of where this all comes down. I mean, I love righteousness. I cannot get over faith righteousness. I wrote a big opus of a book back there. All right, that precious Gloria back there had to edit through for hours and hours and hours, okay? Uh, but I'm passionate about it. And not just like, oh, we're legally, yeah, we're positionally righteous, yay. No, I'm talking about like working that out in everyday decisions. And here's where it gets really practical, okay? We have to ask ourselves, are we operating in our hearts from approval or for approval? From truth or for truth? From identity or for identity? Do, do you hear what I'm saying? It's, 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 I know that's like, oh, you're splitting hairs. It's just words. No, words create pictures. Our hearts speak in pictures. And it's a big deal to God because God loves us. He wants us to get that, that dialed in. Not as the word police, right? But it's important. Language is important because it determines our culture. And we're a kingdom culture. Amen? Amen. That's good. So that's the tipping point where we work out this legal position of our spirit through our heart and into our, into our soul realm, our mind, our will, our emotions. Jesus made you righteous by his works and therefore it's a gift. You know, in Isaiah, it, it talks, Isaiah 64, it talks about this. It says, all of our righteousness are as filthy rags. Romans 3.10, it says, by the law, there's none righteous, no, not one. So, again, that's, that's old school, <laughs> but in the new school, in the new covenant, with God, He has made you righteous. And if you're righteous, you now have a dwelling place where the Spirit of God can abide in the house. Therefore, any condemnation, any broken window, any, you know, bad electrical in the house begins to get fixed, but it has to start on the foundation of righteousness. And it goes through and it repairs and corrects and adjusts by the word of God, by the spirit of God. And it takes something that was unfit for use and hab habitates it with the presence of God. That's what faith righteousness does. It is a big deal to God. 
You guys getting something out of this? Are we going too fast? Are we right? Yeah, we got a few minutes yet. Okay, we're good. All right. So again, what is righteousness? Faith righteousness is divine approval, right standing and peace with God because of Jesus. You are as you ought to be because of Jesus who gives you his value, his equity. That's one of my favorite de definitions of, of righteousness is his equity. You have the same value as Jesus. I mean, they, they wanted to stone Jesus for that. Who you think you are, the son of God? So if people accuse you, yeah. I'm not saying I'm the head. I'm not saying that. Don't get goofy on me. But you're in his body and bodies and heads are attached if they're alive, right? They're together. We're in alignment with, with Jesus. There's no separation. Last time I checked, one of the definitions for sin was separation. So quit separating yourself as a believer. You're in him. Get used to it. Get comfortable in his presence, in the living room with God. God is love and his love works because he is righteous in how he sees and does things. He demonstrated all of this through Jesus and has made you righteous in your identity. That, uh, that righteousness is made to live through you by the power of the Holy Spirit and thereby demonstrating the power of the gospel. We're going to talk about reconciliation. If we can go to 2 Corinthians 5, 17, the ministry of reconciliation, it means to mutually exchange. It's a covenant term, a marriage term, an accounting term. All right. And you guys all know this well, especially around here. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. How many? All, all things. All right. Now, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. So on God's side of the exchange, he's done it all in Christ. But he offers this as an opportunity to all mankind at all times, born again or not. It's there for them to choose. Do I want to step into this or do I want with my free will to do something different? God is not in control. God is not forcing you to do anything. That's good. He's offering you the opportunity to participate in his kingdom. Right? right? And he's given this ministry to us as a stewardship of saying, hey, you know what? God's paid for your sin to whatever condition people are in that you come across. Right? Right? Verse 20, now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. I implore you right now, be reconciled to God. God has done it in Christ on his side. We've got to work through those things on our side, through our mind, our will, our emotions, the, the, the depths of our heart that we're working out. God has space for you to work this out. Sometimes we're too hard on ourselves. Like we get this idea of like, well, holy God, and here's me, and I just, you know, had a bad thought and whatever, right? But the reality is like, no, the truth says this about me. I've got to put that on and step into that because that's who I really am. I might have some old thinking, some, some bad senses in my emotions still, or make decisions from a weird place sometimes, but that is not who I am. That does not define me. Verse 21. Oh, yeah. I'm excited about this one. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him or in Christ Jesus. What does that say? It says we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus as we're experiencing, in context, as we're experiencing that mutual exchange, that reconciliation, that accounting that you took my sin, that makes me righteous. Because I believe. Yes. Yes. Not because you did something, but because you believe. Right. What do you believe in? The gospel. Because it's the power of God unto salvation. Yes. When you believe the gospel, you're believing in righteousness. You're experiencing righteousness. That's good news. I can't get over that verse. In this natural world, I will never get over that verse. Or 517, for that matter. New creation? What? Are you kidding me? 
First John 2, 1 through 2. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. If anyone sins, we have an advocate. Everybody say advocate. With the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and He Himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours, but also for the whole only, but also for our uh, for the whole world. And we all know this: Romans ten nine and ten that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. For with the heart, what one what Believe. believes unto what. Righteousness. righteousness and with the mouth confessions made into salvation. You know, sometimes people are like, well, if I confess, I got to speak it right. Good language is important. But again, you got to recognize if you're speaking it from a persuaded heart or to persuade your heart. It's OK. I'm not against. But but don't think there's a magic like formula of speaking this and then it comes to pass. Woo. It's based on his righteousness. Believing his righteousness out of the overflow of that, you'll start to speak. What's really fun is when you start to think and you're praying with God, but you start to think it and those things start coming to you. You know what I'm saying? And then you realize this grace is on you and you're, you're like, man, I didn't even like do the formula of like confessing it 10,000 times. It just came. It found me. There's a good chance you were believing unto righteousness that you believe unto what Jesus has given you. Are you guys excited about this message? Amen. I mean, this is good news, the gospel. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for the privilege to preach, man. I love this. <laughs> I get so excited. What, I mean, honestly, it's the greatest privilege in my life to share the gospel. Yeah. Good news to people. God's not holding your sin against you, so stop doing it to yourself. If he sourced it and you're in his image and likeness, it's in you. Send it away. Forgive it. Reconcile it. Make the accounting exchange in your heart. Is that too much? Is that too strong? Are we okay? I do love you. I promise. I promise I love you. I have such a passion for the body of Christ to grow. Not just in numbers, but in, in depth, in, in maturity. Because people need what you carry. People need what you have. And your heart being whole and experiencing the, the love and the truth and the spirit and the life of God makes a difference. I forget who said it. I know some famous person said it. But, you know, like when we get to that point where we, we recognize, man, you might be the only Jesus somebody, somebody reads. You might be the only Bible somebody reads or the only Jesus they experience. And I'm not saying that like, oh my gosh, I'm, I got, got all this pressure. I got to save the world. Just be yourself. Go about your business. God's going to work through your heart. But be sensitive. Be intentional to the opportunities. Man, I, I see this situation and, and this person's falling apart in front of me at the grocery store. Can I just take two minutes and just, just love on them? And you don't have to get all like versy and Christianese on them, <laughs> right? right? It's like, man, I just see, I see you're dealing with this. Is there anything I can do to help? And you just start a conversation and you look at people in the eye and you communicate value and dignity and worth and righteousness to them. And there comes this moment, we, we call them Holy Ghost pickup lines, okay? <laughs> I'll just give you an example. This is practical. We're in a practical church, right? We live the gospel. But, but we'll go up to people and, and not to interrupt if they're working or whatever, but we'll just be like, hey, we're, we're doing a class on encouragement. Can we practice on you? Or do you mind if we give you an encouraging word and get their names and look at them in the eye? And there comes this moment, because even if you're just loving and blessing them, there comes this moment and you see it like a deer in headlights yeah. on their eyes. Because they go, how do you know this about me and the truth in me that's crying out for the Spirit of God? Whether, again, whether they're born again or not yet, okay? But there's something about truth that's resonating with what you're sharing with me. And my mind is on tilt because I can't figure out how you know this, even though you just met him. That is such a powerful moment if you recognize it because the Spirit of God is at worth speaking to their identity, speaking to their sonship, speaking to their dignity, their value, their worth. And you get to be in that place, representing heaven 
in the earth, taking up that place. That's a powerful moment. Where are we at? Where am I? Okay, Ephesians 2, 8. You guys know this one too. For by grace, everybody say grace. grace. You have been saved through faith. Everybody say faith. faith. And not that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Now all the grace people say, see grace, it's the gift. All the faith people say, see faith, it's the gift. Wait, that's not what it says. It says, by grace, through faith. Those working together, he provides the grace, you provide the response, okay? Again, let's just put, can we, can we put that little exercise we did at the beginning where we put righteousness in there? Watch this. For by grace you have been saved through faith righteousness. and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. So you believe unto righteousness. Faith is something that happens to you. You're not chasing after it. When you believe righteousness, faith is there. Faith rises up and say, man, God, what, what, how do I want to participate with you in this today? Where, where are you leading? Do I need to sit down and write a book? Do I need to start laying out plans? Do I need to buy a, a new website domain for the plans you have in my future? It's an inside thing, but anyways. <laughs> just a little testimony of some things God's doing for me. Um, but it's, it's just those things. You're just following God. You're following God in your heart. You're following God in leading your families. You're following God in, in blessing uh, you know, your community and your jobs and, and church and, and one another, the family. So as you guys know, and I know you have great teaching here, so you already know this, but I'm just going to give you a quick reminder. The word saved or salvation is sozo or salt, uh, soteria, which means healed, delivered, protected, provided for, and made whole. Now, most people see salvation and they go, okay, I got my life insurance. You know, I'm saved from the fire. But we have to bring that into now. Are you going to need healing in heaven? How about deliverance, protection, provision, or wholeness in heaven? No. So I would argue that that sozo soteria word is talking about right here, right now. Amen. That's good. God wants you to experience that now. Now, it's eternal, too. I'm, I'm not saying it's not, but I'm saying he, he wants us to work that back into our hearts and our lives and our soul realm to live out from there. So now when you hear the gospel of salvation, you're thinking, man, this is the good news of healing, the good news of pr provision, protection, deliverance, wholeness. This is the good news that God has given me. And that's experiencing that is the kingdom, that realm where everything and anything in God is possible. Uh, Romans 14, 17, we're, we're getting close here. Romans 14, 17, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, okay? In other words, it's not external things, it's internal things. And it's the, it says the kingdom of God is righteousness, joy and peace. That's the kingdom of God, but in the Holy Spirit. So we want to move this from an eternal legality into a heart reality. Believing in Jesus makes you righteous and gives you the Holy Spirit without measure and identical to Christ. In other words, uh, yeah. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, right? We have an advocate. Remember, we used that word earlier. Now, this word means lawyer. Everybody point to the lawyer. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Okay. There's a, oh, there we got, wow, this is awesome. Two for one, huh? Okay. So, we have an advocate, and this word means lawyer, or mediator on our behalf. And the lawyers can correct me later if I'm wrong, but I'm trying, guys. Okay. John 15, 26 says this, But when the helper, advocate, or lawyer comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. He's going to testify to your own heart first. Now watch this. The lawyer represents truth on behalf of the person they have as a client. How am I doing so far? Right. We good? Okay. Am I speaking somewhat in legal jargon? A little bit? Okay. They represent truth of the witness. The truth of the witness. The lawyer produces firsthand evidence of what took place. You got me? You with me? Testifying is based on truth, not your soul realm. Secondhand evidence. 
Testifying is not based on your thoughts, your decisions, or how you feel. You got me? So that's the first thing the spirit of truth, he's going he's gonna to testify to you like, hey, I know you just did this and you're feeling condemned, but the reality is you are righteous, you are holy, you are blameless. All the I am's and in him's. Isn't that good? Yeah. And the truth is that the Holy Spirit is a firsthand witness of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus. He was there and now dwells in you as a believer. He brings the evidence. Everybody say evidence. evidence. He brings the evidence of the gospel, which is the power to save. So in other words, he's not taking, he's not saying, you know, in, in a court case, they don't say, well, uh, you know, I'd like to testify. And I heard the screech of the tires down the road, but I didn't actually see it and I wasn't actually there. Is that going to hold up? No. Maybe. <laughs> You're supposed to say no. Oh, yeah. Do you get my point? That's secondhand, that's secondhand information though, right? Yeah. That's not firsthand witness. I was there. I, I observed it. I experienced it, right? That's what's going to hold up. Or I'm going to produce exhibit A, document, whatever, right? And we've got the Bible, right? I've got it on my computer here. But everybody, anybody got a physical Bible on them? Yeah, hold that thing. Right. You've got evidence. You've got evidence, firsthand evidence, the word of God, his love letter to you about your heart and your place in the family and the spirit of God and what you can do in him, who you are and what you can do in him. And so um, we're going to we're going to kind of close with this and we're just about done. Um, if we can have uh, worship come on back up here in a minute. Um, we'll start in a minute. But uh Last verse, Mark 16, 15 through 18. You guys know this. And I know we're flying through a lot of scripture. Is this, I, I just want to make sure you're hearing this with your heart and that you're grasping this, okay? It says, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It doesn't say to preach your opinion. It says to preach the gospel, good news of the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those that believe. In my name, they'll cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And I think this is a word for, for people, wherever you're at, I feel like God wants you to take the next step. Maybe this is your first step. I don't know. Don't worry about it. Just take the next step. Have an intention of like, okay, God, I'm hearing this. Am I doing this stuff for approval or from approval? Am I, am I doing this from a place in you or for trying to earn something to, to prove my sonship? Early on, that was me, man. I was, you know, I, I yielded to the baptism with the Holy Spirit and I'm, I'm experiencing these wild things and I go to the mall and I'd see the kid that's got the, the arm cast in his arm and what, or on his arm and I'd chicken out and I'd feel terrible for a week because my identity, even in spiritual gifts, was still based on my performance. And within a few years, God set me free of that. And I get to, I want to, and I respond to those opportunities. But it took me a while to mature. I had to grow up in my identity. Even though I would see, you know, all the stuff a believer sees, miracle signs and wonders, right? And so maybe you come in from, I, I don't know church backgrounds here. I don't, I don't know where everybody's from, but maybe you come from a, a, you know, really conservative, maybe evangelical type church, right? And I believe God's challenging you to step out into the supernatural. Lean into that. Not because you're proving anything, but because it says miracle signs and wonders follow them that believe. And it lists a few things. And at the same time, if you're charismatic and have been bouncing off the chandeliers and all kinds of wild stuff, I'm taking the extreme, all right? Let the miracle signs and wonders follow you. Don't pursue them. Don't chase them. They should follow you. Why? Because you're a believer. What do you believe in? The gospel. Specifically, what do you believe in? He made you righteous. That's what we need faith for. 
That's the only thing that gets get you out of the pity party. Anybody beside me ever had a pity party? It's like Elijah. I'm the only one in my town that believes you, God. Where's all the people? Right? Anybody? Am I talking to anyone? And then we're like, okay, I got to think differently, God. I repent. Repent isn't a Christian cuss word, by the way. It's a gift. Right? Some people treat it like that. Oh, God, I'm sorry enough. No, we preach the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Not that we don't address repentance, but you don't lead with repentance. You lead with the goodness of God. And repentance is a fruit of that. You know, 1 Corinthians 14, 1, it says intentionally or to intentionally pursue love and desire the kingdom for others to experience Jesus through you. That's the goal, is pursuing love, is following love. But to love people, you've got to know how much God loves you. You can't give away something you're not willing to become. We have to step into that place in his body and say, you know what? I carry something. By faith, I carry something. Because what qualifies you is his blood and the good news of the gospel that you can go and minister and build the body and encourage. And we're going to take some time to minister. I'm like, I got 14 seconds. Look at that. Wow. I wanted to give a little more time, but we, we will. I don't want to go over. I want to respect your time. But um, I just want to take a little time to, to, first of all, I just want to, is there anyone in here that's, that's never received Jesus that would like to say yes to Jesus as Lord of your life? Or maybe somebody online that's watching this video. I don't want to take that for granted for one second. We're going to pray it anyways, all right? Everybody say, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. Thank you for being my payment for wrath. Thank you for the free gift of righteousness. I receive you and I thank you. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, let's just take time. I feel like so I'm, I'm just kind of getting a word. For me, this it just it works differently pretty much every time, but I just want to sense kind of be sensitive to, to God's love right now. How many of you guys are teachers or instructors? Would you guys stand up? Can you be bold right where you're at? Just stand up. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bring you down front. Okay. All right. I'm just I'm just seeing seeing God doing this. Thank you, Jesus. Would you all, as the body, okay, as the body, would you guys just extend your hands towards people near you or lay hands on them? Can we lay hands on you? Is that okay? Is that all right? We're a believing church here, right? Okay. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to come down here a little bit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. God, I just thank you for these teachers. I thank you, God, for these instructors. And, and God says that it's not a natural call on your life. It's a supernatural call. And that I've given you the ability to witness truth and that you speak truth into your environments. You speak truth into the, the students that you have, whether children, adults, or anything in between. Thank you, Father. And this truth is not natural. This truth transforms people's lives. He says, whatever you're teaching has just become the vehicle for my gospel to get through you to them. And you don't have to use Christianese language. You don't have to. You just speak truth. And you do it from a place of love. And right now, I feel like God's just going to give you a picture to the people being prayed for of His love for your students. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's His agape love. It's a benevolent love. It's a love that gives. It's a love that's, that's you know, self-sacrificing, as Clint was saying earlier. It just has a heart and a compassion for them to say, these are your kids. And they need to be instructed in truth. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Father. God, I just thank you for a supernatural patience for the teachers right now in Jesus' name. That they would, they would have an ability to teach in a circle and come back to those things that students maybe don't understand or need review on. Thank you for grace there. Thank you for your ability there. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, if, if you guys can sit down when you're ready, or if you want to stay standing, it doesn't matter. Um, all right, if you need uh, physical healing in your digestive tract, I want you to stand up. Be bold. It's okay. Praise God. We've got a few. We're going to do the same thing. Get, get around people. This is body ministry, right? If you need physical healing in your GI tract, right? I want you to just lay hands and, and, and pray in the Spirit next to them, if you would. Thank you, Jesus. You're anointed. You're the body of Christ. He lives in you. He dwells in you. I'm just going to kind of guide and direct this here. Thank you, Father. So, Father God, in Jesus' name, whatever these uh, GI track issues are, we send them away to the shadow of the cross and we receive an open tomb. We command healing right now in Jesus' name. We command increased energy levels to their physical bodies in Jesus' name right now. Thank you, Father. We thank you for being led, God, in the, even the natural. I see God just connecting the natural with the supernatural right now. Just as a, as a place of obedience, a, a place of faith. But this is no problem. Say, this is no problem. God, this is no problem for you. You created us. You know how it works. Hallelujah. Inflammation, go in Jesus' name. Comfort, come in in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Pain, go in Jesus' name. No more pain. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Now let's let's I just want to hear anybody have have pain in their body before? How do you feel now? Where are we at? Anybody want to testify? Anybody want to share? It's quiet. It's all right. Yeah. I'm not trying to again, not trying to embarrass anyone. It's just let's let's celebrate the kingdom of what God's doing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you're a business owner, I want you to stand up. Or, or like a self-starter. So like entrepreneur or like you do a sales job or something where you're in charge of your like directly commission-based, that kind of thing. Okay, I want you to stand up. <laughs> you guys work for the same company? No? Oh, <laughs> just wondering. <laughs> God's going to crush it in sales this month. Yeah! Right? Amen. Yeah, amen. It's not a, not a bad thing. All right. I'm just going to listen. Just want to listen see what God's doing. Okay? Same thing. Just extend your hands. Pray Again, we're the body, right? This is body ministry. You guys are loaded with the Holy Ghost. You're full of Him. The question isn't whether you have all of God. The question is, does God have all of you? Just yield right now. 
yield. God, we thank you for witty inventions, creative ideas in the area of, of selling, sales, product, uh, financial increase in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, for abundance. I, I just thank you. It's not only that needs get met, but that purposes get fulfilled in yes. Jesus' name. All debt gone in Jesus' name. No more debt in Jesus' name. God, recover any, any, anything where something's upside down, God. I just pray that you would, you would right-size that right now in Jesus' name. That you would send help, send recovery. Take that boat and flip it back up on, on its right size and get it back on course in Jesus' name. We thank you for your redemption there. Thank you for your abundance, God. Thank you for the grace into finances. We invite your grace into the financial realm in our lives. Personally, business-wise, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. I thank you, God, for just visions, dreams, creative ideas coming to us. We open our hearts to that in the area of business. Problem solving in Jesus' name. Who's got a, who's got a, um, like, it's like a, there's someone over here I feel like that's just got a, uh, like a, problem to solve in their business like a like a major one if that's you raise your hand right here you oh you're just praying sorry it's over here maybe I missed it you, you got to solve there's like a problem that you're working on and it seems like I don't know if there's a way through this God right here it's back here what's your name Meredith, Meredith? all right can I pray for you all right father God we just thank you for Meredith father God in Jesus name and Holy Spirit, I just thank you for touching her mind and her heart and her thoughts. Thank you, Father. Just hear God saying there's a way to it and through it. You don't have to go around it. You're going to go to it and through it. And we just thank you for great grace in this, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And it's almost like there's this thing where uh, you're standing, that verse that talks about standing, before, don't worry about what you're going to say when you stand before kings and princes and all that, but I will fill your mouth with my word. So God, I just thank you for this in Meredith, in Jesus' name, in this situation. We call it redeemed in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Awesome. Well, let's just, uh, let's just close in worship. Um, thank you, guys. I know Clint's going to come up, but I just want to say thank you for... Um, just your prayers, your partnership, your friendship, and family. You know, the kingdom of God is vast and beautiful, and um, there's so many different gifts and, and people, and I just love you guys. I want you to know that. I hope you're encouraged. Uh, if you can make it tonight, we'd love to have. We're going to do more time where we, you know, just practice in the Holy Spirit. So we'd love to have you. Amen. Amen. We appreciate Hans. Hans. Show Hans some love. Thank you. <clears throat> He's got, um, he's got a couple of books back there. The red one is $25. That one is Faith Righteousness. So it, it unpacks a lot more what he was teaching on this, this morning. And then the other one is Flowing in the Supernatural. Flowing in Grace. Flowing in grace. Uh, that, is, that is the student guide that you would fill out by watching the free videos from his website. So if you want to walk through kind of some training about flowing in the gifts of the Spirit, flowing in grace, get the student guide, go to his website. Is it HansErlinsonMinistries.com? HansErlinson.com. We'll put all these links in the Facebook group, and we can send out an email, too. We'll send out an email with the links to all your stuff, too. So on your way out, grab a book. Let's just let's sell everything he's got back there. He doesn't have that many back there. Just buy it. Let's just get it all sold. Be a blessing to him. And we'll put up an opportunity for you to give another time. Or not another time, but just so that you, if you didn't give, if you'd like to sow, we want to be a blessing to him to sow into his ministry. And uh, get the books. I couldn't log into the iPad for credit card 
purchases, Stacy and Robin back there. I couldn't log into the iPad because I don't have that phone with me to confirm the <laughs> number. So if you want one and you want to pay by credit card, go ahead and take it. And then the next time you come, you get that paid for. But we not, that way we'll know by count what to, to add to the offering that we give him. So the, the, the white one is $15. Just so y'all know back there, $15 for the white one, $25 for the red one. Buy those on the way out. Come back tonight. There will be some worship. Six o'clock tonight, we're going to have a little bit of equip vibey worship. I like it's vibey worship in my book. It's going to be good. And maybe even some more just direct one-on-one -on -one ministry if you really just kind of feel like you want some confirmation from the Lord. I, I don't. I don't love the environment of creating desperation where, oh, I need this person to tell me what God is saying for me. And Hans would agree, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, prophecy is to confirm what your heart is hearing from the Lord, resonating and, and, and helping you be confident that you actually do hear God better than you think. So back at six o'clock tonight, just stand up with me if you would. Show Hans some love one more time. We do, yeah. And we do have child care tonight. What ages do we have? All ages, all age child care. Praise God. So everybody come. Yeah, and the kids can come in. Yeah, we'll, we'll, it'll be a family affair. Um, so, Father, we just bless Hans and his wife, Sarah, and their family as they are seeking to trust you to be used. It's not about getting paid. It's just about the opportunity. We see that he loves to preach the gospel. Thank you for the blessing that they are to the body of Christ. And we thank you that you're bringing them into more opportunities for that, to sow seeds into the hearts of your people and those who you want to be your people, to, that they are used uh, powerfully by you. And we thank you for the gift that they are to the body in Jesus' name. Jesus said you must be born again to enter into his kingdom. He's done everything to provide eternal life for you, and you only receive it by grace through faith. And we want to help you be sure in your salvation. You know, maybe you're new to Christianity. Maybe you're discovering things about God for the first time in your life, and you don't really know what it's all about. I've been there. Trust me, I wasn't raised in a Christian home. I didn't know anything about God when I got born again and tried to approach the Bible, and it didn't make sense to me. So we want to help you. If you go to forward.church and click on Who is Jesus, we have a simple article on there that explains salvation, everything he did for you, how to begin to read the Bible and start to live a Christian life and incorporate his principles and how to engage the Holy Spirit for empowerment. You know, his grace wants to transform you. His love wants to make you whole. And we want to help you. If you've made the decision to be born again today for the first time, or maybe even a recommitment, and you're just not even sure what to do, how to approach the Bible, reach out to us. Email us at info at forward.church or call our office 770-828-5826. Go to our website, find the article on who is Jesus, and get started. He loves you. He's for you. He will lead you and guide you, and we want to help you. If you'd like to give today, you can give directly at our website, forward.church slash give, or you can text any gift amount to 84321. Thank you so much for your generosity. Would you like to stay connected with us? Then visit forward.church slash connect and click online guest. You'll receive texts and emails with links to free resources and notifications when we're going live on Facebook and YouTube. You are invited to join our Facebook group where you can interact with our pastors and our local and online church members. Visit forward.church and click online community under the ministries tab or go to facebook.com slash group slash forward church. Thanks for watching today. I hope you got something helpful out of this message that you can apply to your life. If you did and you like what you heard, we have hundreds of free resources available online at forward.church or on my blog at clintbyers.com. We also have a church YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel. We have SoundCloud, Spotify, 
you name it, we have it out there. Go like and subscribe to our social media platforms and share those. You know, it's, it's really an opportunity for evangelism to get these materials out online and you can help us. I would ask you to consider supporting Forward Church financially, but then you can also be a great help by going to these social media platforms, follow the accounts, like and subscribe to the videos that will drive up our viewership and we will reach more people together. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our new content. We invite you to make the journey. Experience transformation from the heart through our free discipleship resources available at forward.church slash the journey. There you'll find free online courses, recommended reading and other resources. For tons of free messages and other great resources, go to clintbyers.com.